So welcome to my vlog on Rushton Hall, absolutely beautiful, magnificent grade one listed building. We're just sort of entering into the grounds here. Um, you know, it's the epitome of the new generation of elegant country house hotels. It's absolutely beautiful and it's sort of decorated with real imagination. It's got sort of an ambience of sort of comfortable informal splendour. You can really sort of relax and, and make yourself at home here. It's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, you know, the frontage there is obviously quite imposing and graceful in appearance. Um, it's actually made of local stone. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and also uh, it's set in its own parklands beautiful tranquil um, countryside and this is us just entering into our room now we, whenever we stay here we always stay in the same room it's a beautiful room it's called the zodiac it's because it's right at the front of ho the hotel so you can look over and and see everyone arriving you can see your cars um, it's lovely uh, luxurious uh, pillows and see that fireplace there and all the the wooden panelling. You can see it's called the Zodiac Room because they've got all the uh, star signs on the ceiling. You can see there Libra and uh, Scorpio there. Um, now I don't actually believe in star signs because obviously you can't categorise um, people just by their birth. So basically here, here we are at Rushton Hall. It's an absolutely beautiful, very, very historic um, beautiful hall, it's, quite, it's a stately home, there's this lovely oak panelling and um, oak decoration all over the place, it's absolutely beautiful, there's amazing uh, pieces of artwork all representing the Tudor era um, all around everywhere, so I'm just going to show you around and take you to see a little bit, so come this way. Wow, an amazing artistic design of the ceiling. And you can see the, the beautiful, ornate ceiling, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And this beautiful uh, fireplace, sort of representing the Victorian era. It's absolutely delightful, and the detail, and all this marble and pictures, it's just absolutely exquisite here. Anyway, so I'm really thirsty, so should we go and get a drink? And so this is called the Great Hall, a beautiful, uh, enormous room, almost sort of chapel-like, um, where you can sit down and have a drink. There's the bar over there, just where the bar staff are congregating there. Um, you can also, they also serve afternoon tea here, so absolutely delicious as well. You can have that afternoon tea and macaroons and cakes and things like that. Um, so yes, it's very grand, magnificent, mag magnificent style. It's actually um, of a grand style because it's been re reformed throughout history, and there have been uh, various owners as well throughout history. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the history uh, later on. Um, we decided to go to the spa. Uh, we decided we were going to have a jacuzzi, go to the steam room and go for a lovely swim um, in their spa area. So this is me just walking uh, to the spa. Obviously this is the more modern bit. You can see the beautiful uh, yellow sandstone uh, wood um, not wood, sorry, uh, brickwork on the inside of the spa there. I have had a facial here as well in the past, a facial which includes shoulder massage and hand massage and foot massage and scalp massage as well. This is just where people are waiting to be called in to the um, to have, have their massages and treatments. I'm just going through to the changing rooms here. So here I am, I'm really excited because I just love going swimming. My husband never comes swimming with me. And finally, he's coming swimming with me. So uh, really looking forward to this and I think we're gonna have a fantastic time. And this is it, the beautiful swimming pool, lovely and warm. It's only 1.2 meters deep, uh, both ends. So there isn't a, a deep end and a shallow end. You can see the jacuzzi there, just in the left-hand corner, there's a lady in it. And this is just where you can just relax, chill out after a massage or, or whatever treatment you've had. Um, there's loads of different places to just rest and have a good time. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic place to stay. It is actually quite near Kettering. It's about a 15 minute drive from Kettering, um, probably about 20 minutes from Cor Corby, and probably about 30 minutes from Market Harbour. 
And through here, that's the sauna. You can see a lady's about to poke her head around the corner. Sauna and steam room there. It's absolutely beautiful. We did also find the snooker room. We didn't have a game this time. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely snooker room as well. It's got lovely ambience inside there. So that's really great. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the rest of the sort of the corridors and give you a little bit of a feel of what it's like. Um, now actually, huge stone and timber fireplaces adorn virtually every room. So you've got a lovely um, boiling hot fire um, in nearly all the rooms, including even the um, rooms where you can the guests can stay, although they're not generally not lit. And also they have ornate plaster work. It's featured in nearly in every room, concentrating mainly on the ceilings. This this bit here is just the entrance hall where you walk through. Now, uh, Russian Hall was commenced by Sir John Tresham and his family in 1438, and they owned it for sort of nearly about 200 years. There's some knickknacks and teddy bears and things like that that you can buy there. And then um, the Cockane family bought the estate in 1614, and they resided there. And then, um, then they sold it on to the Hope family, and William Hope from Amsterdam... Uh, purchased Rushton Hall in 1828 for the sum of £140,000. He spent vast amounts of money on it but only resided here during the shooting season. And then in 1853, Miss Clara Thornhill paid £165,000 for Rushton Hall. A year later, she married William Capel Clark, and in 15, 1856, they both took the surname Clark Thornhill, and Charles Dickens became a great friend of Clara Thornhill, and over the years visited Rushton Hall. And in 1850, it's believed he conceived the idea of Havisham Hall for his novel Great Expectations whilst at Rushton. Um, so yeah, there's been a variety of other owners who have bought, so bought and sold it. The latest owners are HI Limited, bought it in 2003. It's just a privately owned sort of family business. So here I am already. Uh, we're going to go to dinner. I can't wait. It's gorgeous, fine dining, fantastic a la carte uh, restaurants. So I'm already, I'm all doled up as you can see uh, in my favourite dress because it's white and white's my favourite colour. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'll give you a little uh, glimpse of what the food's going to be like. And they have a delightful four course a la carte menu. They don't do a taster menu here, um, but they have a lovely a la carte menu with a variety of things like guinea fowl, duck breast and uh, fillet steak and lovely things. Uh, for my starter, I had crab starter. Uh, with a bit of crab sorbet there and then I had the uh, main course of the fillet and that's a, and then there's a beef cheeks as well in there and a king oyster mushroom as well as um, potato and carrot and then this is my rhubarb pudding with poached rhubarb there, it was lovely. And then the next morning for breakfast I had salmon and eggs and my husband had a English breakfast um, and yeah we actually sat in the library. Um, so you can see all those books in the library and of course all the, the oak pa panelling and, and things like that. It was lovely, very well laid out, a very ornate room, uh, really reflecting the history. So I'm going to do a historic recipe. I'm going to do some lamb stew in red wine sauce. I hope you enjoy this. Hello guys, welcome to my slow cooker lamb in red wine sauce with mushrooms, carrots and plenty of celery and onion. I hope you enjoy this. So I'm just starting off here, I've got a whole leg of lamb. Um, I have actually, um, the other side of this piece of the leg, have actually already cut a large chunk out which I used um, for the Sunday roast a couple of days prior to this and then kept the rest of it in the fridge. So I'm just basically sort of cutting through the leg, um, getting sort of chunks of meat for my lovely stew. Now obviously if you want to cut out this process Obviously you just buy the lamb already diced up into, I've obviously cut it into large chunks. You can have it whatever size chunks you want. Now lamb meat um, is actually an excellent source of high quality protein. It's also an ideal source of iron. Um, an average portion can provide sort of about, I don't know, 20% or something like that of the recommended daily intake um, of iron. So it's absolutely fantastic. It's also um, sort of provides about 45% of the daily requirement of zinc, which is essential for growth and healing and also a healthy immune system. 
Um, and it also it's a great source of B vitamins, which, which are essential for metabolic reactions in the body. Um, as well as it's got trace copper, trace elements of copper, manganese and selenium. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just cutting up, I've got two small red onions, cutting them up into small pieces. I've got one stick of celery, which I'm cutting up into small pieces, and one carrot. Obviously I haven't bothered to, um, to peel the carrot, you don't really need to. Um, so yeah, I'm just making it sort of as small as possible, and then I've got sort of a handful of button mushrooms cut up into tiny pieces. So I'm just popping all of the veg ingredients to the base of my slow cooker. Um, and then on top of that, I'm just placing all of the uh, large chunks of lamb. You can have any size chunks you want. Um, and then on top of that, I've got some dark muscovado sugar, uh, which basically I'm just taking a tablespoon and I'm just sort of sprinkling, sprinkling it evenly over the top of the lamb. And then I'm adding some seasonings, a little bit of salt, a dash of pepper. Um, and then I've got a whole bottle of red wine, any sort of quality red wine. Two tablespoons of tomato puree you add to the red wine. And just heat it up. I've got it on quite a high heat. Then that's one beef oxo cube I'm adding to the mixture. This is just for the sauce. You see my bay leaves strategically placed on the side there ready to pop in. And once it's just um, sort of nearly boiling, I'm just going to basically obviously add it to the slow cooker there. I have got my slow cooker on high heat, you can have it on low heat if you've got more time, I didn't have enough time. Um, add the bay leaf and then just sort of on high heat leave it for 4 hours, on low heat leave it for 8 hours. And then once it's done and all ready, I'm just sort of separating the sauce from the meat mixture. And I'm adding in just some um, plain gluten-free flour. Just as a thickener, you can add corn flour instead. I'm just sort of sieving it through so as not to get any lumps. So I've got it on a sort of a, um, a medium to high heat there. Just let it simmer away to reduce the sauce for sort of about 20 minutes. And then every so often, I'm just adding a little bit of sieved flour through there. Um, just to really thicken it up and make it really delicious. And whilst that's simmering away, I'm just finishing off the old mashed potato, just adding a little bit of seasoning um, to the mashed potato. Um, I've got my own little light recipe, which I'm not going to do in this video, I'll do another time. And then that's everything ready. So I'm just adding, you see the sauce is much thickened there. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. It's absolutely delicious, full of loads of vitamins and veg. And of course, uh, the red wine also has um, antioxidants and health benefits. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave your comments below and give me a thumbs up if you like this. Bye.